Hum blah 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 blah. Hum blah 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 blah. One two one two. Fifty thousand roaring orcs. Fifty thousand roaring orcs. Yes. <clears throat> what we, are we, can you hear me? Are we on? We, yeah. Everything's rolling. Yes. Lovely. Um. We go get me a um a, a jar of pickled eggs. Yes. For the end. Yes. And a can of lilt. Yes. Lovely. Ah. Hello. Good evening. Welcome, Professor Jigget here. Aha. Uh -huh. Now. I hope you are all happy and safe, and I hope you are having a wonderful evening. The sun is shining, the rain has disappeared, and summer is very much on its way. Now, you might be wondering, why am I here? What's the purpose of me? Well, I'll tell you, okay? I'll tell you. Now, of course, you know me, Professor Jiggett, and I'm a world-famous storyteller, and I have some special stories coming your way. You see, the marvellous, amazing, wonderful people of Cartwheel Arts have sponsored me to tell you some wonderful stories. Stories of wonder. And so I thought, I thought to myself, what's wonderful? And I thought, uh, chips, chips are wonderful. Uh, then I thought, uh, hot baths are wonderful, yes. Then I thought, oh, and you get one of those real big ones out, yeah, and you flick, oh, that's wonderful. But then I realised What's more wonderful than the seven wonders of the ancient world? <laughs> so I thought, yes, I will tell you stories inspired by the seven wonders of the ancient world. Now, we are telling wonderful stories for Cartwheel Arts. We're going to put on a marvellous festival at Darnhill, Darnhill Festival. Every year, oh, it brings artists and the people of Downhill together to have a celebration and it warms the cockles. And the theme this year was wonder. Of course, we can't have the festival this year. It's going to be um, postponed for later on. And so, to bring a little bit of wonder into your life, I'm telling you wonder stories. So, seven wonders of the world. And we're going to start with probably the most famous wonder and the only wonder that still exists today. Of course, I'm talking about the Great Pyramids of Giza. Yes. Now, it wasn't a Giza, you know, all right, Giza. It wasn't a Giza that built the pyramids. No, it was Khufu, the Pharaoh Khufu. Um, but we're not going to tell you how the pyramids were built because that's boring. No, instead, I'm going to tell you a story inspired by the ancient Egyptians. And one of the best stories involves their very first Pharaoh, Osiris. Now this story is quite a scary story. There is quite a lot of violence in this story as well. So I hope you're brave enough. Are you brave enough? Yes? Good. I think I am as well. Now, to tell this story of wonder, first of all, as always, make sure your bums are nice and comfy. <laughs> Give yourself or someone next to you a big squeeze. <laughs> Sit back, relax, and listen to how the story goes. <clears throat> Once upon a time, as all good stories go, the entire world was covered in ocean. There was nothing but water. And from that water rose an egg. <laughs> and one day, this egg hatched and from the egg flew out a bird and that bird flew around and looked at all the water and decided that wasn't any good there needs to be some land and so that egg that turned into a bird the bird then turned into the sun and the sun warmed up the ocean and the water evaporated revealing land you see that sun was Ra. Ra was in the egg that turned into the bird that turned into the sun. Now Ra, the sun god, warmed the earth and then created the sky and then the earth and the sky had children and one of those children was Osiris and Osiris became the very first pharaoh of Egypt. Now Osiris was tall and handsome he was strong and clever. He was kind and funny. He was, he was pretty much like me, really. Yes, yes. Now, he was a very, very good pharaoh. Everybody loved him. He, he taught humans how to farm. And he taught them how to bake bread. And how to brew beer. 
and everywhere Osiris went, civilization flourished. Everybody adored him. Well, except for his brother Set. You see, his younger brother Set was uncontrollably jealous of Osiris. He wanted to be Pharaoh. He couldn't understand why everyone didn't love him and why he couldn't be in charge of everything and be the boss. And then he realised the reason he wasn't Pharaoh, the reason why people didn't love him, the reason why he wasn't in charge was because his brother was and if his brother wasn't then he would be. And so he came up with an evil diabolical plan. Now that plan is this, just in case you want to do the same thing. I wouldn't advise it. Step number one of the plan, organize a party. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Everyone likes a party, so make sure you have a big, big party. Step number one, make a party. Step number two is to measure Osiris. Now you see, Set measured Osiris when he was asleep and he got all of his, uh, all of his sizes, how big his head was, how long his arms were, how long his legs were. He got all of the size and measured Osiris. Step number three, build a box. A beautiful box made from mahogany and cedar, gold and ebony, covered in jewels. Step number four, at the party bring out the box and say to everybody, I've just come up with a right good new game. Whoever can fit in the box wins the box. And everybody loves a game and so everyone cheered and they played. Now people tried to get in the box but they were either too big or too little, too fat or too thin, too long or too short. Nobody fit in the box except for Osiris. Now Osiris got into the box and said, Oh brother look I'm in the box, it fits me, I win the box. Yeah you do, said Set. And then he closed the box and he locked the box up and filled it with lead so Osiris could not escape and then he took the box and he threw it into the Nile. The box floated down the Nile until he got stuck underneath a tamarisk tree. Now this tree was only very small but when Osiris got stuck underneath it this tree began to grow. The magic of Osiris' body fed the tree so the tree got bigger and bigger and bigger and Osiris became one with the tree. His body was trapped inside. Back at home Osiris' wife who was also his sister was a bit worried. She hadn't seen her husband for ages. And so she tried to track him down. And as she tried to track him down, she followed the clues and the tracks all the way to the tamarisk tree on the side of the Nile. She realised that inside the tree, her husband brother was trapped inside. And so she very carefully chopped open the tree and took out Osiris. And took Osiris back home. Now, of course, Osiris had passed away. He'd been trapped in a tree for weeks and months. But Isis had extreme magical powers. Now, when I say extreme, I mean extreme. She could do lots of different ridiculous things with her magic powers. One of the most important things that she could do, the most specialist and powerfulest things she can do, was bring people back to life. And so Isis began to practice her spell. And when she got her spell perfect, she performed it over Osiris. She said the words. And as she said the words, Osiris began to move. And when she finished the spell, Osiris was brought back to life. Yay! Fantastic! Must be the end of the story! No! Don't be so silly. Now, when Osiris came back to life, Set came through the door and he saw his brother. And he was enraged. He drew his sword. He ran to his brother Osiris and Set chucked him up into 14 different pieces. <laughs> 14 different pieces. He then gathered the 14 different pieces and he threw them across the whole of Egypt. <sighs> Isis, the poor old woman, had to now go around Egypt again to find her husband. But instead of finding one piece of her husband, she had to find 14 different pieces. And so she travelled around Egypt gathering all the different pieces. Finally, she found all 14 of them. Well, not all of them. She missed one of them. The, uh, 
you know, yeah, a little bit down there, the bits. So she couldn't find the bits, but that's fine. She put all of the pieces together, but she, because the quest took so long, the parts of Osiris' body began to rot. So when Isis wrapped up the body parts to join them together and did her magic spell, when Osiris came back to life, his skin was all green. And because he was rotten away, the magic spell only lasted for one day. And so Osiris spent one more day on Earth, and he had a great party with his friend and his wife's sister. Once that day passed, Osiris had to go back into the underworld, into the land of the dead. But because the gods loved him so much, and because Ra, his grandfather, the sun god, loved him, he became the god of the dead. He became the god of the underworld. Now, you may be saying, what happened to Set? Well, Set did become the pharaoh. And he was a horrible pharaoh. He ruled with a tyrannical fist. Everybody hated him, and Egypt suffer, suffered under his rule. But Isis had a son with Osiris before he died. And this son was named Horus. And when he grew up, he challenged his uncle to a battle and whoever won would become the pharaoh of Egypt. Now in the end um, Horus won and they had lots of ridiculous battles. Um, one battle they both turned into a hippopotamus um, and they had a fight as a hi hi as two hippopotamuses. Ridiculous. Hippo hippopotami. Hippopotamuses? Hippopotami? I'll let you decide. But that's a story for another day when Horus beat Set. Osiris became the god of the dead, Horus beat his uncle Set and became the new pharaoh, and Egypt became a wondrous place yet again. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed this evening's story, a story of wonder, a story of how the first pharaoh was put into a box, then that box went under a tree, became a tree. He was by his wife and then he was brought back to life and then chopped up into 14 different pieces and then his wife had to go find those 14 different pieces and put them back together using bandages and then when he came back to life he only had one day left on earth and then he went to become the god of the dead <gasps> ridiculous really as well as wonderful so i hope you enjoyed this evening's story we'll be back again next week for another wonder story as we look at a story inspired by the seven wonders of the world. Today we went to Egypt inspired by the Great Pyramid of Giza. Thank you for watching and thank you to Cartwheel Art for sponsoring our story. I hope you have a wonderful safe evening until I see you again. Goodbye now! Goodbye!